Hey there, this is Matthew Jennings, and in this episode of Peach Jar Extra Credit, we're going to dive into the mechanics of Canva. If you have ever wanted to unlock your inner designer and really lean into the tools and resources you have available to you through this really great design tool called Canva, this is the video for you, so stick around. I am hanging out this morning with my friend Rob Mazaros from the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Office of Education, and we are going to be diving into the mechanics of Canva, which is really cool. Uh, aside from working at the superintendent's office, Rob is also the current treasurer for the California School Public Relations Association, CALSPRA. Really amazing communicator, long time in the field, and a really good designer. Rob, Thank you for being here with me this morning. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Glad to be here. Canva is an exciting topic, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, share some best practices today. So Rob Mazaros, uh, Director of Communications for the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Office, been in school PR for about 13 years, um, longtime communicator, um, was in the, uh, uh, the agency setting before that, and has some journalism background as well. Um, and my wheelhouse is in graphic design, in Marcom. Uh, media relations, and I have the uh, privilege of using Canva almost daily. Um, it's kind of a, been a game changer, so I'm, I'm happy to be here to see if I can provide some best practices for everybody. So Rob and I did a previous video. You might want to check that out if you haven't yet, and it's just about overall flyer design and branding. Really good complement to the video we're going to dive into today. But in that video, we really talk about some great high level concepts that I think would lead us well into our Canva discussion. So before we dive into the tool itself, Rob, why don't we pull up a couple of slides and let's just talk about some of those high level concepts we need to keep in mind as we jump into the design elements in Canva. When thinking about designing a flyer or really any marketing piece, um, it's really important to keep three uh, elements in mind. And I like to refer to that as the formula. So uh, your piece should be informative, it should be visually appealing, and it should be designed with enhanced readability in mind. So we'll take a little deeper dive into each one of these. So an informative flyer briefly communicates the details of what you're trying to promote and has a clear call to action. Um, you want to make sure it's uh, very clear what you want your consumer to do with the information that you're providing to them. Uh, the second aspect is visually appealing. Um, flyers and marketing materials that are bright and colorful and use engaging photos and really convey professionalism and represent your organization really well. And then the, uh, the part we're gonna talk about most today is the enhanced readability. And really the visual appealing and enhanced re readability go kind of hand in hand. When you, um, when you enhance the readability, you oftentimes uh, will make a, a flyer um, more visually appealing. So the, the enhanced readability ensures your content is easy to consume and accessible to as many people as possible. When those th three things converge, we have what we can consider an optimal flyer. So what does enhanced readability mean? What are we gonna look at specifically when we jump into Canva? Uh, we're gonna look at th uh, four things, color contrast, typography, spacing, and how to best organize your content. So you look at uh, kind of a, a cheat sheet on, on these four concepts uh, for best practices for enhancing readability and uh, just go through these briefly. And we'll, we'll show these in a practical aspect when we jump into Canva, but uh, this might be a great time to take a screenshot just to keep this handy. Um, it, it's a nice uh, kind of refer reference point. So high contrast, um, contrast is, is, is a color contrast is basically the, the ratio between the, the foreground color and the background color. So we wanna use uh, dark text on a white background or a light background or a light text on a dark background. So your, your, pop, uh, your text really pops off the page. Also wanna avoid using text over a busy background. Moving on to typography, um, best rule of thumb is to use as few fonts as possible. Um, I, I often tell people that the best, uh, best practice is to use one or two uh, fonts per flyer. Um, use a sans serif font. That is a, a font like you see here. I think this, is, this one is called Railway and it's, uh, it's basically a more contemporary um, opposed to a, a, a serif font, which is more of the traditional style, like a, a Times New Roman, and uh, has the the serifs, which are the kind of the um, the feet they call them sometimes. They're kind of the decorative ends. So uh, research shows that uh, it's it's easier to read for most people uh, a sans serif font. So try to use those if at all possible. 
uh, uh, avoid using fancy fonts. Um, and if you do have to use fancy fonts, make sure that you use them uh, exclusively in headlines or or in a, in a, a when they're they're larger. Um, fancy fonts can be very hard to read. Script fonts, fancy fonts, decorative fonts can be very hard to read. And finally, uh, keep your text at 12 points and above. Having something too small is just uh, it's just hard to read for for most pe- most users. Yeah, don't try to cram too much on a page. And so and you're you're making your font smaller and smaller to get more info on. Absolutely, yeah, good point, Matt. So uh, moving on to spacing, um, make sure you provide adequate space between letters, that the horizontal spacing, letter spacing, and between lines, which is the uh, the vertical spacing. So you want to make sure that there's adequate spacing so your, uh, um, your your letters aren't squished together either horizontally or vertically. And uh, this 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 setup here is has perfect, I would say, uh, letter and line spacing. It's very easy to read. Uh, do not crowd your graphic elements. I see a lot of people trying to just cram all kinds of content, all kinds of um, elements onto a page, and it gets just overwhelming for the user. Um, you know, white space is your friend. You may have heard that before, and less is often more. So keep those two things in mind when you're designing. And then finally, organization. Uh, good rule of thumb is to use bullet points when possible. As you can see here, this is well organized, this, this page we're looking at, because we use um, a lot of the concepts we're talking about right here um, in using a bullet points. If I put this same content in paragraph form, it'd be hard to follow, right? This is really succinct and a and, and nice presentation. So use bullet points when possible. Um, use headlines and, and subheads to help na- uh, readers navigate the, the content. And we'll get into a little bit more on that when we dive into Canva. And then um, emphasize important content with what we call call outs. And basically, that's just a, a, a box behind text or a, a burst of some sort. And again, it's a uh, it's kind of hard to explain without seeing it, so we'll we'll dive into some of that as well. So these are kind of the best practices, and uh, we'll dive into Canva and uh, see how these things look. All right, thanks, Rob. That was a great overview. Let's pull up Canva, and we'll walk through some of the tools that we have just discussed and how they apply here. All right, so we've got Canva open here. Rob, kind of walk us through what we're looking at, some of the basic tools, and and I know you've got kind of a blank canvas up here on the screen. Talk to me about. I'm new. I don't know what I'm. I don't know how to get into this. I don't know what to, to do next. Like, just just work me through top to bottom, left to right, and this whole little this whole little thing we call Canva. So um, Canva is really made up of what I consider to be three parts, and that is the the artboard or the canvas. That's the blank slate that we have in front of us, and then over on the left rail um, we have the the main navigation of the tool here, and uh, we're really going to focus on. The top four elements, that's the design, that's where all the great templates are, and we'll get into that in a minute. And the elements, that's the where you choose your photos and your frames and your graphics and your lines and your boxes and your shapes and all those good things. Um, uploads, um, Canva has a million different elements and photos, but if you wanted to upload your own or if you have your custom logos or a photo you, you want to use that's not inside Canva, um, that's where you would upload your photos. And then, of course, the text. So we'll, we'll concentrate on those uh, four tools uh, on the left-hand rail. And then once things are out on the artboard, um, the top is where you'll be able to manipulate the size and the um, spacing and the opacity of, 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 the, of the shapes or the photos and those types of things. So let's just jump in and, and see what we have. Um, I like to tell people too, is like, sometimes if you've never been in the tool, it kind of seems overwhelming. And really just get in here and start playing around because you could have a ton of fun and actually get lost in, in time, right? You just start dumping stuff out onto the artboard and just playing around. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a great time really. And you can't break anything, right? It's just, you just explore. And that's the best way to learn this tool. It is. And I, I would, I, I'll echo what Rob's saying. Like if you were, if you were a novice design and you opened InDesign, I, the first time I ever opened it, I had never had any training. I was like, yeah, yeah, no, that's not going to work for me. And I just shut it right back down. Right. I will be the first to tell you this one is actually the tool Rob was just saying it is. It is so simple. Once you get in, start doing a couple of things with it, you realize like, ah, I can do this. Okay. And our hope here today is to take some of that mystery out if it is a tool that overwhelms you um, so that you can see how easy it really is to get in here and work. Yeah. So the, the best place to start if you've never been in here before is to go up to the design um, button at the top left-hand corner. And this is where all the templates live. Uh, Canva has 
a ton of pre-designed templates that you can start from uh, that you can start from and just drag and drop your own content in and customize. So, for instance, if I, the, I mean, this, these just are the random ones that come up to start with. Uh, these aren't that exciting to me. So, if I know that I my thing I'm promoting is something education related, I can type in um, education flyer, and it'll bring up a ton of education related topics flyer um, templates. Um, so you can just kind of scroll through here and you know see what kind of piques your interest. Um, I'm just going to look through here and see if one, let's see here. Um, okay, just let's do the parenting seminar. So I'm going to choose that. And that's just going to, all I did is clicked on that. And now I have these all these assets out on my artboard for me to um, manipulate and customize. So um, maybe I get it started. I'm like, now I see it in front of me. I'm like, ah, me, you know what? Maybe I don't like that one. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, let me look for another one. So I can just go up to the top here and just delete the page. And um, I can add it another, a new page. So now I have a blank slate again. So maybe I want to go to, um, maybe this one will work better for me. So I uh, throw it out, out on the, uh, the artboard and I'll start customizing it. Yeah. Um, the, the next thing I'd like to show is um, how to upload a photo. So if it, Canva has a ton of photos and elements under uh, or photos and, and lines and shapes and graphics under the elements tab, which is the second one. Um, but if I know that I don't, if I know that I have a, a photo that I want to use, that's on my desktop that I've taken of, of something, um, I'm going to go to uploads. And uh, I actually, I don't even need to do that. All I need to do is really drag a photo. So I'm just going to drag a photo from my desktop in onto the artboard here. That uploads it for you. That's neat. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought you had to go to uploads. Yeah. You just dump it onto the artboard and, and it'll be there. So now this is kind of in the way, right? Um, I don't necessarily want this right there. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete it. Right. But the, the nice thing about it is now I have it over in my uploads. So these are all, these are things that I've uploaded um, for my own work purposes. So you can see I have a ton of things in here because I use Canva all the time. But see, I want to I want to replace this uh, this person that's in the middle of my flyer um, with this image that I just uploaded. So all I do is go over here and I drag that over. And I drop it in the box. It's easy as that. Now no, I can. Double I don't like the way it cropped there. Yeah. So I can um, go in and, and double click that. And then I can move around, I can move the uh, the image around within that box. Cool. See, if it were here, that's not a very engaging picture, right? We talked about engaging pictures. Um, we don't even know what this person is really doing. So the, the, the engaging part of this picture is this woman with her beautiful smile. And so I'm just going to double click on that and I can move it around within that frame. And now we have um, this person who is, um, maybe we crop it a little bit further. So, huh? I liked it before. Yeah, it looks like she's like a volunteer donating sweaters and blankets or something. Exactly. Exactly. So, and then what you can do is um, maybe you want this to be a little bit larger. You can just go and you just go to the corners and you can drag this um, element, scale this element like that. And you can move it around anywhere you like. So maybe I want it off the screen a little bit. Maybe I want it a little bigger. Maybe I want it in the corner. What if you didn't like the color of the border around it? Like maybe you wanted to make it your school or district colors. Can you change that? Absolutely. So it's easy. Like I was saying, um, everything that's that can be manipulated, if you go up to this top rail here, anything that can be manipulated is available here. So as you notice um, at the top, um, the top, it has the color. So if, if I wanted to change the border color, I could just click on this little box up here and it brings up all the color choices. Um, maybe... Maybe this is this teal color is more in line with what I what I like, or maybe it's the purple, um, or maybe I have a custom color that I want to use, and I can go up to the plus sign, and I can I'll put in the either, either put in the, the hex code um, if I know that, or I can just play around with different color options, um, and then I like the peach jar colors though. You like the peach jar colors? They're great. They, they, it, it looks just like your logo, Matthew. 
<laughs> so, um, so the, all that to say is the, the t- we're going we're gonna to start from scratch in a minute. I'm going to show you some of th- these other elements, but I wanted to show the templates first because, again, there's a ton of uh, different elements and options. Um, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to start a new page. Um, so maybe it's um, maybe you're a, a food vendor. Mm-hmm. Type in food flyer. And again, all these different food flyers come up. So maybe you're having a uh, um, a bake sale or a um, a uh, some kind of a, a food sale for one of your schools or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So go through here and just click this and it drops it out here. And then I have access to manipulate all these different um, all these different tools. And maybe I just wanted to maybe I just like how the background looks, right? So maybe you, you don't have to use all of these elements that are on here. You can you can start with a template and then you know delete some of it. Maybe I just like how this the background looks here. So maybe I want to start with with that um, as as my as my background. And then what I can do is um, the next thing we'll talk about is the elements. And that's where, you know, that's where all the, the goodies are, right? This is the goods right here. So um, this is where all the lines and shapes are, the graphics, um, photos, frames. So for instance, if I wanted to start with this as my, my background that I adapted from one of the templates, and I know I want a... Um, a, a photo to, to be part of my design. I can go to the frames here and I can, there's all kinds of different shapes that you can start with. Um, so if I know that I just want a, um, you know, a kind of a rectangle shape with the rounded corners, I'm just gonna click this and that will dump this out onto my desktop here. So now um, I have a photo frame and I just need to dump a photo into that photo frame. So I can go back to elements and go to photos. It has a great search tool. So so maybe maybe my flyer is about a reading program. So maybe I wanna look up uh, kids reading and that'll bring up a ton of photos of kids reading. So I can go through these and something that I will point out is you will you do have a um, a crown icon on some of these? What that's indicating is these are only available for the pro version of Canva, and it's it's very cost effective. It's, I think it's one hundred and fifty dollars per year for five seats. So that is that's a pretty darn good deal for what you get with all of these great assets. Pays for itself. Yeah, absolutely. The ones that don't have the crowns are free. And you can see even on this screen, it might be hard for the viewers to see, but there's actually quite a few there that don't. Yeah. And um, pro tip here, if you do only have the the free version, you can filter by um, pro or not pro. So how you do that is you just come up here to the top here, these little sliders and bring that down and you can filter by free or pro. So I'm just going to filter, filter by the free version. So now all of these photos that are available to me on the left-hand side are free. I don't have to pay for these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop like we did before that photo into these, uh, into the photo frame. So now we have a nice photo here. And again, um, I can manipulate the size like that. I can double click. And now I have, uh, now I can scale the photo within that photo frame. If I didn't like how it was cropped, maybe I wanted to get a little tighter into the kids there. So um, that is photos. A lot of times um, I'm going to take actually take this filter back to off free, and, and you can also do the orientation of the photo. So if you're only looking for vertical or horizontal photos, you can you can filter that way. You can do colors. So if I'm looking for a if my fire flyer background is blue, I want to have a a blue um, you know kind of a, a theme going. So I could I could hit the blue there and apply filters. Now bluish type photos will come up. Um, so the the filter tool and the the search tool in Canva is is really nice. Um, I never thought about filtering by the orientation of the photo. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you, you know, a lot of times based on what you're doing, um, you want it a certain way, certain, you know, either horizontal or vertical and it's, you know, certain photos won't fit 
great one way or the other. So going back to elements, um, so lines and shapes, a lot of times we'll, we'll use lines and shapes. I talked about call outs and maybe we want to put some text over this photo, but we want to make sure that the text isn't lost uh, on the photo. Like we talked about, you know, we don't want to put text over uh, a busy background because you, you just won't be able to read it. So what I'm going to do here is what we call a call out. Um, and maybe I want just a, a round circle here. All I did is clicked that round circle and it dumps it out onto the, the artboard here. I can change the size by scaling up and down there. I can go up to the top. Like I said, anything that's manipulated, uh, editable can be uh, manipulated up here. Those uh, tools change depending on what element you've selected as well, I've, I've noticed here. That's actually absolutely right. So um, they're different from the the shapes. Um, if you if you put out a, a text box, they're different for that. And we'll get into that a little bit in a minute here. But so, you know, I don't like this blue necessarily. So I'm going to go up to the color palette up here, click that. And again, I have all these uh, great colors available to me. And it looks uh, like it changed those colors a little bit to complement the backgrounds. Is that right? Those yeah. Colors? So it has, it has this... Um, it kind of adapts to what's on the artboard already. So for instance, if I started with um, a logo, like the Peach Jar logo, if I put the Peach Jar logo out in the artboard, it would it would offer colors that were complementary to that. So it's it's really neat in the way that it's, um, you know, it's adaptive and it's smart, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to get all, you know, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm not going to make it look pretty necessarily yet. Um, so say if I just wanted an orange color here and the next thing I want to do is I want to add some text to my, my flyer. So I'll go down to the text tool. Like we, uh, talked about, we, we talked about design, talked about the elements tab. That's where all the goodies are, uploads. And then of course, you know, we're going to need some text. And all you do here is you can just click on add a headline. And that just brings out a generic text box where you can start with. How about this? Join us. How about that? A little more engaging, right? So if I want to uh, resize, I just I can resize one of two ways. I can drag the corners, or I can I can highlight all the text, and I can go back up to the the top, and I can put in the the font size manually or with these plus and minuses. So maybe I know that I wanted about 45 points. Um, I can do that. We talked about color contrast um, a little bit ago. So this is a little, I mean, this is acceptable, but I would say that this reversed out to white, this copy here over this darker, darker background would be better if it were white. See how that just pops a little bit more? Another thing you can manipulate, like we talked about, is the... Um, letter spacing or the line spacing. So this letter spacing, we go right up here to the top, these uh, just the letter spacing. So you can make it wider, more space between letters or less space crammed up. That's a no, no, that's really hard to read, right? Um, so I'm gonna, you know, something, something around that area would be good. Let me just uh, add some other text in here. I'm just going to add some X's for the to give you the, the effect here. Details. It would be like date, location, or whatever, whatever. That's these right. Are. Yep. So I'm going to just drop this in here, and this is what we call a call out. So this is if I if I didn't have this box here. Yeah. Look at that background. Look at how hard this is to read. It's lost. You can't you can't read it at all, and that's that's why it's so important. And I see this often mistake often where people try to get too creative or too fancy and they try to put text over a busy background or over a photo and it just it doesn't do it any justice you can't um it takes away from the photo for one and it's just not readable yeah. so that's why i used this um and look it, how it does those lines rob talk to me about those lines a little bit because you you were able to pull that out and like in other design software i'd be like no how am i ever going to line that back up and it was easy for you to just put that right back where it was yeah. So, uh, yeah. So again, th this is easy to manipulate. You just drag and drop. And and what what this is now is say I wanted to have it right justified, middle justified, or or left uh, left middle or right. What I can do is I can go up to um, again up to the top, and this is the alignment, the center alignment, 
um, left alignment, right alignment. So you can see what that's doing here. And, and for, for something that's like this, I probably would choose um, center alignment. So again, it's just clicking that, get, click it through those buttons there. So now I have um, this nice copy box with yeah. uh, the call out. And of course these details, we you put these details in, but I also want to reiterate the importance of spacing with text. So we were able to, on the headline, we were able to mess with the um, letter spacing, which is the horizontal spacing. But let's let's do the line spacing now. Mm. If you get this so crammed up here, it's really hard to read. So we really want to give some air in between our text here. So I'll go, I'll go back if up to line spacing. That, if you're fitting too much info on. So if you if you find yourself like squishing the font size down or squishing the letters together or the line spacing, that's your much. first clue that maybe you're trying to fit too much into one space or onto one flyer. Exactly. Yeah, just consciously think when you when you're doing this that space is your friend and less is often more. It's like kind of like the billboard theory, right? You want to design as simply as you can um, to, to enhance readability and, and user engagement. Um, you wouldn't cram a bunch of stuff on a billboard because people have very limited time when they're going to see that billboard as they're driving by. Similar situation in, in flyer design, we don't want to overwhelm the, the user. We want to give them the pertinent details and draw them in and have a clear call to action. Um, and having too much information or too many design elements is is often off-putting. Yeah, and Rob, depending on how you're sending this out, whether it's through PHR or whether it's on social media or your website, when somebody clicks on it, most likely they're viewing this on their their cell phone, their mobile device, right? So we, we already know they're going to be viewing this in a limited platform anyway, so less is more. That is a great point, Matthew. Yeah, you're right. Um, I get flyers all the time for my own kids' activities and things. And I very rarely look at it on my desktop, right? I'm always doing it when I'm doing something else. Oh, okay. I got the details. Click here. I'm good. Um, so. Can you show us, Rob? Like, I know you can do this. Um, and I, I've I've found this. I don't use it a lot. But when I have a graphical element like this circle, sometimes I like to play with does it look good or not by taking the text and just and setting it to the curve of whatever that element is. Like in this example, the circle. Yeah. Show me how you would change join us. So maybe it would be the arc of the circle. Sometimes I like the way that looks. Sometimes yeah. I don't. Yeah, but definitely. So I'm just going to move this away from this photo. So I have a little bit. Oh. Actually, let's get rid of that photo for now altogether. Um, so I have these elements here. One thing before I get to that. Um, so if I want to move all these elements as, as one unit, this is a great trick. And, I, and I'll also mention this. You can, you can design this without a two-button mouse, but I would highly recommend a two-button mouse because some of the at, um, some of the features are easy to find if you have a two-button mouse, and I'll explain that here. So if I want to um, move all of these elements in one, in one move... So the I can, circle, the join us, and those Xs. Right. See, if, I, if I, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, like, figure stuff out here. So I'm going to highlight all of these elements... And I can move them around, but then if I click off it, now I have to do that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. And what I can do is go down to group. And now all these things are manipulated as one unit, mm -hmm. which is a great feature. So now I can move it around. Um, I can scale it up and down. Yeah. Um, so, and if I wanted to ungroup them so I have more you know, I can, I can manipulate them ind individually. I can just right click again and go to ungroup. Now I have access to just the individual parts. So back to what Matthew was originally asking is if I wanted to have this join us in a little bit different shape, um, I could, I could click on, on, on that and go up to uh, the top again and go to effects. And you can provide, you can, you can have drop shadows and, um, you know, you can, you can mess with the opacity behind it and different things. But what he was, he was asking about is how do you curve something? And all you do there is you go down to shape and you go to curve and then you can, you can kind of manipulate how this looks by adjusting the curve curvature. Mm -hmm. um, because I curved that, it kind of looks a little, cur um, crammed now. So what I'll do is I'll probably go in here and go back up to the letter spacing and 
you know, take that out a little bit. Cool. And then I can back go back up and just kind of manipulate that. And again, just it's just all about playing and trial yeah. and error. So that's how you would do that. Um, I, I do like in this example, straight. I don't like the curved look. I knew I wasn't going to before I asked, but there are times in which I've used that uh, and, and it, it just fits in whatever else I was doing. So, yeah. So to, so to move that back to, I, I agree. I, I think it looked nicer, just clean um, straight across. So I can just highlight that, go back up to effects, click on effects, and then go to down to shape and just um, go to none. And it will bring it back to straight. And again, it, now that it's straight, it's a little bit, there's a little bit too much spacing, right? So I'll just go back up, double uh, highlight all that text, go back up, and I'll just take the, the spacing down a little bit in, in between the letters. And now, now, Rob, in case you don't have a two-button mouse, can you show us in the toolbar how you can select those elements again and then up in that right-hand corner, group them and ungroup them just in case uh, people yeah. don't have that two-button mouse thing? Good point. So I'm just going to highlight. I'm just going to drag my mouse over all of these elements. And that's that's one way you can you can hide, select them all together. Except for now, this element at the bottom right hand corner is get, kind of getting in the way. So you have to be careful what you're actually selecting. So I'm going to select all of those, and then right up at the top right hand corner, if you don't have a two button mouse, is um, is group. So you can group them that way as well. Ungroup or group them that way. So I group them, and now I can move these, size them um in, as one unit so thank you that's great you got it another thing i use my two button mouse for a lot is um i'm going to dump another photo out here and okay so now i'm down doing making a flyer of uh a, something related to dogs so i'm going to type in dogs here all the assets that are available to me related to dogs are here so i like this cute guy right here so now i i put this on the artboard so what happens is that covered my element. So how the heck do I get this in back? So, hmm, okay. So I can do a, a right click on the photo of the dog and I can go to send to back. And now this is in back of that element. And now I have, I can move this around. I, this is one unit, can resize something like that. We'd probably say adopt me instead of join us. There you go. See, keeping me on my toes, Matthew. I appreciate that. <laughs> so you can um, you, you can do the same thing if you don't have a two button mouse. You can go up to position. Um, you can move it forward or backward. Um, another thing you could do with with the positioning is um, so I'm going to just get rid of that text. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get rid of actually. Let's just get rid of everything. Let's start with a a tan background and. Um, Say I wanted to Matt, Matthew, Matthew is cool, right? Uh -huh. Matthew is cool. And uh, I'm going to size I this up. Me. Oh, get you back. <laughs> so I, now I have this over here. So say if I want to center this copy block in the middle of the page, I can just highlight that. Um, I can either use my two button mouse or I can just go up to position up at the right hand corner and go to position and if i want to center it in the middle of the page go to center and it'll drop that perfectly in the center of the page if i want to go to the middle which will center it vertically and horizontally um, so now that is um, perfectly centered right in the middle of the the page there both vertically and horizontally right. another thing that's that's cool is to be able to change the opacity or the the, the fading of the a photo or a, a graphic element sometimes that's necessary so again, I'll go back up to my elements and um, find another photo here. Say I want a photo of a, a book. Put this one out on the artboard. Now say I wanted to make this lighter. If I click on that photo there and I go up to this kind of check bar, check mark or check checkerboard looking thing, um, I can change the transparency, the opacity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay to use text over a busy background, but I would never, for instance, if I, if this was at full tr transparency mm -hmm. and I put some copy over it. Reading fair or whatever, you know, this is a book again, clever, right? I'm very good at this. 
Yeah, thanks. Okay, so you can read that, but it's not, it's, it may be hard for some users to read that. Mm -hmm. But if I clicked on the photo and I brought down the transparency. Yeah, you still get the image. You still get the image and now you can read the copy. Yeah. So that's one way that, I mean, I, we say a great good rule of thumb is not to put text over a photo or a busy background. However, there are some applications where this would work just fine. Yeah, um, so that's, that's one instance you, you would, you would use that. Talk to me about like, if you are designing a flyer like this, like this is a reading fair or something like that, how do we think through the process of adding these elements? Like, is it, is it like reading a book left to right? Is it like just reading top down? Uh, what, what, what are the concepts there that we need to? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great question. So if you're, if you're, if you're, again, if you're starting from scratch and have no idea, I would advise starting with a, a finished template and then just dragging and dropping your content in. If you're starting from completely from scratch, um, it, well, how I do it, and I think it makes most sense because as, re as humans, we read top down, left to right. So I generally start at the top and work that way, top to bottom, left to right. And of course you want, you know, you want your headlines and your call to actions. Uh, you want your headlines um, kind of at the top, generally. Um, you want some kind of a, an engaging element, like the the photo of the young woman with the uh, the blankets and those types of things. Something to draw your reader in. Um, and we have some ideas. We have a flyer that we can actually jump into, Matthew, and kind of an example of a bad flyer that we can make better. Would that be helpful at this time? Do you let's think? Do that. Let's 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 take a flyer that we've got put together that we know needs some help and adjustment, and let's work through the concepts and the tools we just talked about and and work through that. That'd be great. Okay, let's do it we're going to show you how to make this flyer an optimal flyer, right? We talked about color contrast. We talked about spacing. We talked about typography and we talked about content organization. So the first thing I see here is there's a whole lot of color contrast issues um, taking place and typo type typography issues. So I don't even know if you can see what this flyer says because the text of the headline and the color it's against are so similar, right? It says volunteers needed and you can barely make that out. So the first thing I would do to improve this flyer is simply make this text white instead of purple, right? And I would do that by going up to the top and going to text color. And I'm just gonna make that white. So already the color contrast is so much better and you can read volunteers needed, mm -hmm. however, we talked about fancy fonts, right? And I told you fancy fonts are okay in headlines. This font is okay. I think it's still too hard to read. Um, so I would advise looking for something that's fancy, intriguing, draws the reader in, but not hard to read, which this is. So I'm going to go highlight that headline. And it, this one is called Benedict, I guess. So I'm going to find one that I like here on the top scale this down now because it's uh well wow, that's interesting yeah so so now what we've done is a different font we could created another issue with spacing right i actually like this font but it yeah. is together the line spacing is and in the letter spacing there a little bit exactly so what we're gonna do is highlight that and we'll correct that we'll go up to the uh the letter and line spacing and we'll you know take that out a little bit Go up and oops, change the sizing a little bit. That's cool. So now we have something that's pretty readable, and it you know it's it's still it's an intriguing font, right? It's it's not fancy. It's it's kind of a it's a uh, it's a decorative font, but it's definitely um, sans serif. It's blocky, um, can, kind of contemporary. Um, I think there's actually a little bit too much room horizontal or um, vertically now line spacing. So I'm just going to put that up a little bit. So something like that would be nice. So that, that's the first fix. Uh, the second fix is you can tell the other copy blocks are, they just look weird, right? Because they, they have funky spacing. So what I would do here is, um, I don't know what, this is uh, Montserrat. I, I really like to use a simple font called Open Sans. And um, I'm going to change all these copy blocks to, Open Sans. So, Atomic Sans. 
Not Comic Sans, no. And that one's uh, that one's interesting, and it kind of dates us, Matthew and I. It's that like was, back in the day. <laughs> that was the jam. <laughs> it was. Um, so I'm going to type in Open Sans, and that'll ser- search for Open Sans for me. So I like this font, but again, it's uh, the black over the dark background is still um, the contrast isn't right. So I, what I would do here is also make this. Um, copy block white. So I'll go up here and I can change the color. So now that you can see that pops, but the spacing is still kind of goofy. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go up to uh, the line and letter spacing, uh, space this out both ways. And this is something I see missed a lot is, is people going back in and adjusting their line and letter spacing. And I think you've really driven home the point here, Rob, like at almost every instance you've touched text, you've touched line and letter spacing. Exactly. Another thing that I see kind of related to that is not giving enough breathing room around the margin. So a lot of times I see a flyer. And when I say I see a flyer, we we have a, a an approval process at my organization where we give people the training and the power to use and design their own flyers, but everything is is um filtered through the communications office. So I see everything and correct everything before they go out. Um so we have the best product out in front of our consumers so i see i see things like this a lot yeah right to the edge right to the edge and it's just it it just doesn't look great it just doesn't it just looks odd it just doesn't look professional so to the extent you can bring things in off the margins something you know a a quarter quarter inch is probably a good rule of thumb i think um even a little bit further is is fine look how much better Um, that looks yeah i mean and i just let's let's I still have the original down below. So you can see here, I'm just going to scroll up and that's where we started. And this is where we are right now. So you can see the top is just a lot more legible. Mm -hmm. Um, This, this logo works fine for me like that. I think it's fine. Um, Could make it a little bigger if you wanted to, but correct. Yeah. So I can do that by just clicking both of these elements, scaling it up or down a little bit bigger there. Something like that would be fine. Um, the next thing that's not working for me on this is this photo. Mm-hmm. It looks like to me, and I see this a lot, is someone just downloaded a photo off the internet. It's pixelated and it's really unnecessary. It's redundant, right? It has says volunteers needed. The headline says volunteers needed. Why do I need to have that twice, right? So uh, we had a this beautiful photo of this woman who looked like she was volunteering that we already uploaded. I'm just going to upload it again because I see it on my desktop and I'm just going to drag it into this, um, into my artboard. So now I can, uh, now it's on my uploads and I'm just going to drag and drop that photo right into the design there. It was easy. Yeah. So, and again, to reiterate, if I wanted to manipulate this photo inside that photo frame, I just double click it, can move it around. I can scale it. I mean, of course, I'm not going to want to do that. That doesn't make any sense, right? So I'll click it, um, change the sizing. And now we have uh, this person who looks like she's volunteering for something. Yeah, it makes it so clear. You see volunteers needed. As a, If I'm on my phone and I'm getting this without even looking at the rest of the flyer, I know what they're, I know what they need. I almost already know what my call to action is, and I can see exactly what I'm getting into. Uh, if if I if I sign up here, this is this is already so visually yeah identifying it, it makes it easier. So in adding that new photo, which is a much better and engaging photo, I've created another problem. Right, I've created a problem where there's text over a photo. So what I can do here is I'm going to use a call out. I'm going to use the same kind of um, technique as we used before. So I'm going to go back over to my elements. And Rob, I, I just want to say here too, like this is a really good point uh, to make because I, I know you and I are thinking the same thing here. And, and this is not a good photo to put text over and then make less transparent, adjusting no, right. the opacity. Like this photo really pops. It's really beautiful. It's engaging. This is a yeah. good example of when not to use that tool, adjust the opacity down so the font sticks out more. Yeah. Uh, this is when you would want to put a call out and, and use that and use that functionality there. I think that's Great an important point. Distinction. Let me let me show you what that would look like. So if I if I did what Matt's describing, um, I have the uh, highlight the photo. I go up to the transparency bar like like we talked about before. So if I do this, well, it's going to do a couple things. Yeah, 
I didn't know I was going to do that. Behind it are other elements that will totally confuse things, right? We have the, this, this top element is, it has a swoosh in it. And now that we've messed with the transparency, transparency of the image in front of it, you can see that, that swoosh down here. So that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So we couldn't do that in this instance. And we wouldn't want to anyway, because you lose the effect of the engaging photo. So I'm going to move this back to full opacity. So to correct this, um, I'm going to do a call out. Um, I'm just going to go to get my shapes and I could do it. A, a, you know, I could, if I wanted to get crazy, which I don't, I could do something like this, you know, this, this shape. Um, I'm going to do something more simple and just do a circle because I think it complements the design, complements the swoosh, it complements the, the circular photo. Um, good point. Subtle change there. Subtle yeah. difference. But a good yeah. point. So now I have this element here. Um, don't like the orange. I think I'm just going to match the, uh, the kind of the wine color, I guess it is. So I go up here and just change that to the same color as the, the main background color. Now you lose a little bit here. So I don't want to cover the box and the, and the blankets necessarily. So I'm going to make that a little smaller. And then I'm going to have to make the text a little smaller. So I just highlighted both of those. And now I can manipulate the size as one unit. And you told us never to go below 12. How do I go back and check now that my font is still an appropriate size? So I can just double click, um, highlight the text, and then go up to the top. And it'll give you the, uh, the font size. So this is 14.7. We're still Perfect. good. So we're, we're still good. Yeah. And it's, it, you have to do, I mean, that the, the 12, um, the 12 point is a, as a rule of thumb, every font is going to be a little bit different in how it presents. So you kind of just have to play with it. Um, I mean, I, you know, when in doubt, just make sure it's legible. And like you said, make sure it's legible on a small device as well. So, uh, now I have this element here and I still covers a little bit too much of the box. Cause I want to, I, I, I want to, you know, we don't have to show the whole blanket, but I want to make sure that I show enough of the blanket so I know what it is or that the, the consumer knows what it is. So something like that would be fine. That's great. And when so, you move that around, you got a really nice grid mark there that showed you that you were you were right in the center of that larger circle. It's hard yeah. maybe for the viewers to see that, but it's not there now. And then as he moves back to the right, you can see those marks pop up. It tells him where it's centering it there. So visually, that looks really good when it's centered. That, that's a great point. It's something I I use often, but you don't really think about it. You just kind of do it. It just guides you in the in the right space. So yeah. So right now, I'm basically I'm a little off center there. If I want to be on center, it's about right there. Yeah, that's great. I just drop there. So the next thing I want to talk about is, again, this uh, color contrast, this yellow text over the lighter pink background is, is hard to read. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to reverse it out because if I reverse it out to white, it's going to be harder to read, um. right? So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make it black. Again, we talked about um, a light on a dark or a dark on a light. That's mm -hmm. the best rule of thumb. Again, this is a, a, a font I don't care for. I'm gonna change this to um, Open Sans. The spacing is not great, so I'm going to do this. Um, this is a great place to talk about organization. Uh -huh. So, in this instance, um, this is talking about we need help with these things. This is listing things, right? And in, in a paragraph form, it's really hard to follow. It's not really hard to follow. It's It would be easier to follow if it were bulleted and it had a, a headline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to pull this apart a little bit. So I'm going to take the we need help with, and I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to make it into um, kind of a, a subhead. Did you cut and paste with just your keyboard shortcuts? How'd you yeah. cut and paste? Yeah. So those shortcuts just, are just keyboard. You can do it. What's that? The shortcuts work here just like they would do in Word. J just, just the same. Just the same as any other program. 
Um, you could do a, uh, a, if you're using a two button mouse, I actually use the, the keyboard for this case, but you could do a two button mouse. You could do copy and paste this way as well. Um, so now I want to, we need help with these things. We're going to bullet these um, aspects, but I don't like how this is centered alignment. We talked about alignment a little bit ago. So I'm going to, I'm going to choose that. I'm actually going to make this left justified this time. Uh, let's see here. So now that's left justified. And I don't care for the black there. I'm gonna, actually going to highlight all of that. I'm going to make it that wine color. I'll just go back up here and choose that wine color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Um, these elements, and I'm gonna bullet these. Uh, we need help with these things. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just click on that um, copy that was in a paragraph form, and I'm gonna go up to the top again, and I, that's where I can add bullets. Um, I can add numbers, I can add bullets, add numbers, or I can take them away. So I'm, in this case, I'm gonna add bullets. That What that did is that bulleted the whole paragraph, but I want individual bullets. So what I can do is just go in and make that. So the next thing would be, so rounding up donations, we don't need the commas necessarily anymore. Um, and all I'm doing is, is returning on that copy and it'll automatically give me a new bullet point. That's cool. And then of course, changing the first letters to a capital and deleting those, uh, yeah. those commas. That's easy, that's great. Yeah, so let's get through this real quick. And they also need help rebuilding houses. How about that? That's pretty cool. Count me in. Yeah. Okay. I'm really plan ahead because this is not even until 2025 here. So I mean, you got a lot of time. To oh get yeah, yeah. There you go. There. I like Sweet. that. Didn't I didn't notice the time frame here? Okay. So now we have a subhead that um, makes the copy more easy to nav easier to navigate. So we need help with. Uh, rounding up donations, packing uh, relief goods, transferring to warehouses, distributing relief goods, taking inventory, and rebuilding houses. And you um, match that font with the font above it. We are currently looking for people to help with. Correct. Which is another thing that we've talked about, limiting the number of fonts used on any given flyer. Exactly. So now we have, well, technically we have more, which we'll get to. But uh, for instance, now this copy here is um, the next thing we want to talk about. And that is a that is actually a, uh, a serif font. That's more of the traditional style. Um, you may not be able to see because it's so small, but it has the, the, the serifs, the decorative ends on there. So again, the first thing I would do here is I would take this font and make it um, the same as the others, the open sans. This is where the call to action comes in. And we talked about having a clear call to action. So what I think I would do here is maybe bold this, make yep. it real clear what we're trying to do here. Um, if you think you're willing to help us, please register for the info session, learn more, et cetera, et cetera. So that is that. So I want to give an example. I kind of want to show this um, opposed to where we started. So if you remember, we started here. Yeah and had a lot of problems so now we are here it's getting a whole lot better right uh, this website reallygreatsites.com i'm going to highlight that reverse this out to white and again we have spacing uh, issues. Space, spacing issues terrible um and the sizing i'm just going to scale that down and this font is some other font it's brixton sands i'm going to again go to go to uh, the rule of thumb is one or two fonts per flyer. I'm going to go to Open Sans. Um, and I'm not sure. So I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to move this box. It's a little bit overwhelming to me at the bottom there. Again, I'm trying to just create a little more space. So let me go in here and and maybe it's, maybe I don't want it black. Maybe I want the box. Heavy. What's that? Black is really heavy. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, so I, I like the I like this pop of yellow in this in the logo. So maybe it's a pop of that same yellow. Maybe it's um, maybe it's something like that, um, which of course creates an issue. We're going to correct <laughs> the issue. Color contrast. The white no longer works. It's too hard to read. Uh, light on light. So I'll click this. 
and I will go to just make it black. Yeah. So now it really pops off the page. Um, I'm going to highlight both of these elements, scale them down a little bit, maybe just to make it just a, a tad more interesting. Um, I'm going to go up to elements and I'm going to look for a, an arrow. So I can type in arrow. It's going to bring up all kinds of arrow options. I'm going to just put it, select this arrow. I'm just, you know, just a little, little touch of, um, design, I guess. Um, it's not necessary, but I think it just needs a little something playful. That's cool. So what I'm going to do here, I, again, contrast issues, light on light. You can't really see this. And I'm going to make it that same yellow or uh, same wine color. So now what I can do is I can also go down here and I can change mm -hmm. the angle. If I wanted to, I could go up and I can flip the, uh, um, the direction. So I could go up to flip. If I wanted to flip horizontal, I could do that. I could flip mm -hmm. vertical. I don't want to do that in this case. I just wanted to show you what's, what's available because it, it points the right way. So now we have a clear call to action mm -hmm. and kind of a playful element about, you know, pointing to this URL. Go click that. Yeah, go click that. Exactly. So the one other thing that I see here, again, is this the text. The font is still um, that Brixton. I'm going to change it to the, the rule of thumb. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to move this to, just going to change it to open sans. Actually got easier to read. Yeah. It, it, you can tell it just pops when you, when you change it. Yep. Um, actually this flyer started off with about six different font types. Wow. Um, and now we're down to just a couple. Now we're down to two. Yeah. Whatever fonts in the logo as well. Yeah, which is I don't I don't count that as a as a font. I mean, a logo is a, a graphic element, and um, so that that that's fine as is. Um, so that to me is a pretty checks a lot of boxes. Yeah. Checks a lot of the boxes, and that was done quick and easy. Um, but again, here's where we started. Here's where we ended. I think we could all agree that this is a lot more visually appealing because we enhance the readability. Yeah. And then we worked through the elements that we started with, which is, you know, the, the, the kind of the layout, the design, the hierarchy, the reading order, we, we covered, you know, um, font styles and types, um, columns and the kind of the, the bullet points here and, and how information is laid out, um, when and not to use that transparency effect on photos and how to use the call outs um, how to get those websites and call to actions to pop. A lot of things happening here. This was a good one, Rob. Yeah. So this would be, I would consider this an optimal flyer if we look at the, those three pillars in that formula we talked about originally. So, yeah, that's great. And we can talk about a couple of bonus things here um, on that left-hand side. So we'll give you, we'll give you a couple of bonus uh, bonus tips here. Um First one we'll talk about is in the apps on the left-hand side. Let's say you wanted to add a QR code to your flyer. It actually is just something native you can do here inside Canva, which is great. So open up apps on the left there, Rob. Okay. It's the bottom one. And you can see QR code generator is one of the most popular things that they have in there. Of course, I'm sure it is. So when you click that, it opens up a window where you just simply put in the URL. So in our case, it was, you know, www.reallygreatsite.com. Uh, I don't actually know if that goes anywhere. I know it's an example people use. It, might it, probably, it probably doesn't go anywhere, but let me, we'll put, we'll put our website in there just Great. for the fun of it. And so then uh, it generates a QR code for you. You could, if you hit customize, see that drop? Yeah, you can hit, you can hit generate and it just pops it right on in. Uh, you can customize that a little bit with your background and foreground colors and even the margins of the QR code itself. So if you wanted to come in here and make this, uh, maybe match some graphical elements or colors that are already existing on your flyer, you can do that. I don't do that. I kind of tend to avoid messing with the customization a lot because QR codes in so many instances are just white and black and it's it's just kind of what people are used to seeing. But it makes it really easy to generate a QR code, pop it on your flyer, and um, you can scale it to size, of course, and fit that into um, a corner somewhere so it's really easy for people to use. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up, Matthew, because I didn't know this was 
I haven't um, explored the apps as much. There's a ton of things you can you can explore. Um, I generally would create a QR code outside of uh, of Canva and then import it in. Yeah. I didn't know it was available to me right in front of me, and this is ten times easier. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool. And I found I found like sometimes QR code like free generators like end up holding me hostage a few months down the road. Like I'll get an email that says if you want this QR code to stay live, you're going to need to pay ten dollars a month. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a bummer uh, being held hostage that way. And you've blasted something out to thousands of people in your community and then you have no choice but to pay that fee. So uh, this is great. And, it, and it's, it's not going to go away on you, which is really neat. Now, Rob, I know there's one more bonus tip that we want to leave everyone with, which is really cool. We both love this one. What do you got? So probably my favorite feature in Canva is the ability to take a photo um, and get rid of the background. So say if you wanted just to have a a kid holding up a book without a background, um, really enhances some designs. Um, it's a, it's a click of a button in Canva. If you take this into Photoshop and did this work um, back in the day, this would take a long time. Photoshop's come a long way and it's easier to do now, but all that to say is Canva allows you to do it with the click of a button. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Hey, give us an example. Uh, and yeah, this is so, a pro, pro feature. So this is that, a paid version, this particular that, tip. That's a great point. Yes. Um, so this is one of the uh, features that's only available in the pro version. So if you're using the free version and you love this, um, you won't be able to find it. So uh, another advantage to the the pro version. So anyway, um, I'm going to go to elements and I'm just going to pick this photo that I have here recently uh, used photos. This kid will work just fine. So now I have this uh, cute kid with a book um, and or behind him or something. Yeah. So he's got a chalkboard or something. I, I, I just, I mean, it just doesn't do anything for me with that dark background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the photo or to select the photo, go up to the top and I'm going to click edit image. And there's a feature here that's called background remover. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click that and watch what it does. Magic. That's insane. Gets that's rid so of cool. the background. Would have taken an hour at least. Yeah. So now I can, I can, uh, you know, now I mean, maybe I wanted to put. Uh, it just looks cool right there. I'm just, I mean, maybe I want to have some other background that's. Uh, I mean, I'm doing this quick, but maybe I want some kind of a mm -hmm. background here. I'm just going to send this to the back. That's so neat. Wow, that's so cool. And now, you have, now you've gotten rid of that chalkboard thing and you've done your own. Yeah, now, so. Rob, I'm catching something that I know you've already caught here. And that is, and, and it works the same on your phone because iPhones have a new update that kind of does this and it's never perfect. It, sometimes it nails it 100%. Sometimes it's not. I can see between his hands, there's still some chalkboard. Yeah, okay, so you're right. So if I get in here real close, you can see what Matthew's talking about. Um the parts in between his fingers are still the, the background. So um, to, to fix that, you can go back to edit image. And actually, I'm just going to edit image and background remover. And then you have some brushes there. Okay. Now I can go to um, erase. And now I can go in and manually erase the, uh, the item, the, the, the parts of the background that I want. This Sometimes you have to get really... And you're really, really close yeah. to be able to do this. And you can scale the brush size down very small. Okay. Now I'm in here really tiny. And this is so little anyway. You don't even probably have to be really exact here. People won't notice it if you just take out some. Yeah. So you just have to mess with it a little bit. Um, get a real small brush. Get in here really zoomed. That's so cool. Now I can just get rid of all of this. Wow. And I'm not going to do his other side. Uh, now I took off part of his finger. But you can you add even it. notice that, huh? You can add it. You can add it back. If I took off part of his finger and I wanted to add it back, mm -hmm. I go to restore, and I can restore that little part of his finger. That is so cool. Look at that. So I didn't do that perfectly, but then if I click done, and now you can go back and when you zoom out, 
you'll it's you will very never, I mean, never know. You can't see. You can't tell that that's um and if you if you're picky particular, you can go back in and, and fine tune it. But I mean, you can't tell that that was done. You wouldn't know now versus the other side. You can still see that chalkboard behind his hand yep. on the other side. You wouldn't yep. have any idea. And and that's so easy. Like you can move it around, and it's just the background's just gone. The best takeaway is just explore, have fun. Um, don't do this when you're on a deadline. Jump in and and learn and make mistakes. Lean on Canva's uh, great library of templates. Um, again, you don't have to use them verbatim. You can customize them. You can start as a, a starting place and then customize from there if you don't know where to start. It's a really fantastic way to, to get your design skills honed inside a program that really does make it as easy as possible. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave us comments. You know, Rob and I would be happy to engage with you or try to answer anything. So if you have questions, you know, be sure to, to hit us up. If there are elements you'd like to see more of, be sure to add those in the comments as well. Uh, we might be doing future videos like this and we'll we'll be sure to include that. Yeah. Hey, and Matthew, before we go, I, it, it occurred to me that we didn't really talk about how to access a finished flyer, right? So let's, can we go over really quickly how to download a flyer? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. You've made it in Canva. <laughs> Way to go. And now what do you do? Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Let's do that. So let's, uh, I'm going to get rid of the bus. So we'll go back to the uh, flyer that we've completed. So it's as simple as um, going up to the top right-hand corner to share. And um, if you want to download this flyer uh, for distribution, either printing or, you know, emailing it to people, um, just go to download and you can choose the um, file type. It, typically for a flyer, you probably want to do a, either a standard or a, a print PDF. If you're just going to email it, um, the standard PDF is fine. So um, it just condenses the size a little bit. So it's easier to email. So standard PDF, um, I don't want to do all of my pages. So I just want to download the first page and click the first page, page one here, go to done, download, and that will download to wherever things download on your, on your desktop. So it's basically um, anything you want to uh, download or share, you can actually share. If you wanted to collaborate with other um, users, you could go to, um, you know, that anyone with this link can edit and you can copy the link. So if I wanted to collaborate with Matthew, I could send that link to him. Um, he could click on it. And now we would both be able to engage with this content and um, collaborate in real time. Yeah, that makes it really easy. If you are working on a team and you want to get other eyes on it, and hey, what are your thoughts here? And then instead of back and forth, like, well, I think this should or that should change or this should be different. You can come in here share it really easy. And then that, that person that you kind of trust to go through that copy and edit that is able to go through and make any changes in real time, which is awesome. Hope this has been helpful. Like I said, if there's something you'd like to see more of or something you'd like Rob and I to look into more and maybe even a future video, we might put another video out regarding that accessibility piece of flyers. Um, be sure to hit us up in the comments, give us a share, give us a like, we're happy to, to share this kind of uh, information and content with you. Rob, I can't thank you enough again for spending so much time with me and going through this together. I think this is awesome, and I'm so happy to get it out there to everybody. You are a rock star. Uh, I appreciate that, Matthew. It's my pleasure. I, I really enjoy it. So um, anytime. All right. Thanks very much. We'll see you all later. I might have in the recording, I'll just throw that in and then magically we change clothes. <laughs> I, I should have told you to wear the same clothes we did that. We did our test run yesterday with. I don't know if in the recording it shows my mouse like right on the center of your skull. So just out of uh, caution, I think we'll just have to probably knock that whole thing out again. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hey there, this is Matthew Jennings. No. What am I? Community department manager. It says it on my screen there.